So there's this teaching out there about the Lord's Supper that if you're in church today and you're taking the Lord's Supper, which is something that we do in remembrance, by the way, past tense of what Jesus Christ has already done for us. He gave his body for us. He gave his blood for us that he was full payment for our sins. But that if you should be in the church and you are taking the Lord's Supper, if there's any sin in your life, let's say maybe you're struggling with... Um, pornography, uh, you're struggling with um, some type of sin, it doesn't even really matter, We could, the list is, goes on forever, right, because we all have something we struggle with, and the message is this, if you have not confessed that sin and fully repented of that sin, then you've got a big problem on your hand, because if you take the Lord's Supper and that sin hasn't been fully resolved, then God just might make you sick and maybe even kill you. Now, one, I want you to understand, this comes from uh, the Lord's Supper uh, teaching that we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And what are we saying here? We're saying, you know, Jesus Christ came, he broke his body, he shed his blood, he was full payment for your sins, that whoever believes by faith shall be saved, will not perish. It, it, is, uh, it is a gift from God, it's the grace of God. And, you know, we teach all this stuff, then we say, but you know, if you're... Uh, here sitting at church and you're taking the Lord's Supper and you haven't got it all right, God's going to get you. And I just want to shed a little bit of light on that today. So in order to do that, let's kind of go over the text real quick. So we start in, uh, really a lot of people start at verse 23, but I think we need to back up just a little bit. This is 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, and I want to start with verse 20 where it says, Therefore, when you meet together... It is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So right away we see everyone here is meeting together at this church, right? They've got it all wrong. I want to make clear, what was going wrong in the church of Corinth? Well, these people, had real, they learned this freedom in Christ, and they went crazy with it. They really did. They just went nutso, and the writers got to kind of rein them in and say, Listen, don't abuse your freedom. Don't use it to please the, uh, the flesh. And this is a perfect example of what they were doing. So he starts out by saying here, therefore, when you guys are meeting together, it's not so you can honor, uh, so you can take the Lord's Supper. So they're, that's not what they're doing, even though that's the what, what they're supposed to be doing. He says, for in your eating, each one takes his own supper first. So what are we saying here? I don't really care about all the people that are not here yet to eat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dig in and eat everything. And he says, and one is hungry and another is drunk. Let's stop right there so we can get a context. In your church, most everybody watching this, the odds are that here is how you celebrate the Lord's Supper. You have a wafer, tiny little wafer about this big. I'm going to bet it's not gluttony because you're not exactly making sandwiches and trying to stack them all up this big and eat them. And you, the flip side, so that's what we take in remembrance of Christ's body being broken for us. Uh, and then we have a little tiny, tiny little thimble that we put a little bit of grape juice in there. Now I wonder how many of us are getting drunk off of grape juice and committing gluttony off of eating a little tiny piece of bread. Now, follow me here because this is the context of what the writer has just said. This church is not coming together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, but instead, the ones that get there first are eating everything, eating all the food up, and they're getting drunk. There is our context for this entire message of what's going on. They're not honoring God. Okay, so let's continue on. He says, what? Do you not have houses to eat and drink? Why don't you do that at home? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? And this, I will not praise you. Then we pick up where most people start, okay? They, 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 most people start at verse 23 and we miss the whole context. And then it goes on to read, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke bread and he said, this is my body, 
which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, let's stop right there. Jesus is saying, Do this in remembrance of me. I want to be clear. He's saying, do this in memory of me. He's not saying do this so that something can happen for you going forward. This is a celebration that we are remembering something that has already happened. What has already happened? Jesus broke his body. Jesus shed his blood. For what? For sins. He died for sins. We are celebrating what Jesus has already done done for sin and then we're going to turn around and say oh but if you if you're taking the lord's supper in remembrance of what he did you better check yourself on what you might have done last week or yesterday because if you still got some of that hanging over you that sin that's still stuck god just might come down and out of wrath and anger and he just might kill you or at the very least he's going to make you sick so i continue verse 26 he says for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself. And here we go. A man, You need to examine yourself. What are we talking about here? Hey, the writer just said you guys are out there getting drunk. You're reading all the food. Uh, you don't really care about all the poor people haven't even showed up yet. They're trying to get there. And when they show up, what do they see? A bunch of sick, stupid, drunk people, right? Christians. But they're drunk. They've eaten all the food. And the writer is going, you need to examine yourself. This is supposed to be a time where we honor our Lord Jesus Christ. And you're not coming together for the Lord's Supper. You're coming together for drunkenness, gluttony. Uh, gluttony and I'm going to guess there were, from what I've read in uh, the book of Corinthians, that there was some sexual activity going on. We'll leave it at that for the younger audience. So it says, Therefore, whoever eats the, the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy man, he shall be guilty of the body. But a man must examine himself, and in doing so, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. How do we examine ourselves when we eat and we drink from the cup? For he who eats and drinks and eats and drink, I'm sorry, for he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself. Hang tight. If he does not judge the body rightly, for this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number are asleep. Let's stop right there. Okay. So what we notice what we didn't read. For this reason, God has made many of you weak and sick and killed some of you. This text does not say that God has done this. What the text says, remember, these guys were all getting really, really drunk, overeating. Have you ever been to a party when you were younger? What happens when people drink too much? We know they were all drunk. They get sick, right? So the writer says, for this reason, many of you are weak. And you're sick, right? Examine yourself. What are you doing? You're, you're taking your freedom and you're, you're not getting it, what this is all about. So many of you are weak and sick and a number of you uh, sleep. I don't know. I haven't looked at the context. I can't recall if this means that they're sleeping because they're passed out. But if they're dead, let's say this. Have you, what happens to people that drink excessively? Liver disease, heart attacks. There's all kinds of people that eventually pass away from excessive alcohol. So I don't know if these people have passed out um, or if they are literally, he's talking about some have actually died. But this weak and sick and sleep or death is all about people that are drinking in excess. And then he continues, he says, but if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. Stop right there. What, what, what is the legalist saying? Oh, God is judging you, and then he comes down and he makes you weak and sick and kills some of you. Well, that's not in context here. What's really happening here when he says, if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged, is here we have all the poor and all these people that are coming in, if you will, in the third hour, in the fourth inning, and they're ready to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Imagine this. You walk into church. You walk into church. 
and we have our wafers, we have our grape juice. It's not happening in your church. This isn't a message to most of the people listening to this message. This, this writer is saying, these people are walking into a church. Imagine it, you walk into your church, and everywhere you look, they're all drunk. They're Christians, they're believers. They're drunk, they've eaten all the food, and there's nothing left for them to celebrate the Lord's Supper in remembrance of what Christ did. Who's doing the judging? They are, of course. The people that have showed up, and they're looking around, going, what in the world? You call yourselves Christians, you call yourselves believers, this is how you celebrate the Lord's Supper. This is not about God's judgment. What does Scripture tell us? He who believes, hopefully you filled it in on your own, but he who believes is not judged. But he who does not believe has already been judged. Okay. So again, it says, but if we uh, have judged ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Remember, he, uh, all those in Christ, there is no, for, for those in Christ, there is no condemnation. Verse 33 then says, So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, what's, this is the solution. What is the main point? What is the author trying to say? So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. Look, before you go in and pig out and eat all the food, if it's like, oh, I was hungry, I had to eat. Eat at home. This is not your meal. This, this event is in celebration of what Christ, again, has already done for us, has already done about our sin, not something he's going to do later on. This is a done deal. So let's not treat this like a banquet, right? Let's not treat it like an all-you-can-eat buffet. If you're hungry, eat at home so that you will not come together for judgment, right? You're not going to come together and there'll be judgment and divisions among you because of your behavior. The remaining matters I will arrange when I come. Folks, that's the message behind this whole uh, Lord's Supper message and this idea that you better examine yourself because if there's a sin, if there's anything you're holding on to that you haven't fully, um, think about this. The, the churchy message is if you have not fully, fully repented, if there's a sin you're holding on to, then you're not allowed to take the Lord's Supper in remembrance of what Christ did for your sin. You're not allowed to celebrate what God has done about that sin. And I, I have news for you. Thank God that at that time, if there's something that I am holding on to, that I'm struggling with and I'm fighting to be, that I can celebrate that Christ died on the cross. He broke his body for me. He shed his blood for me on that cross. Why? So I don't have to be the payment for sin. So God doesn't come down and curse me and make me sick and kill me because of sin. No, there was a punishment and Jesus paid it. We can celebrate that with the Lord's Supper. God bless you and thank you once again for joining us at Jesus Without Religion.